Okay, so talking about lectins, let's start in the gut, where so many interactions with food do begin. The intestinal epithelium is the single layer of cells connected by tight junctions. So when you think about the gut, the digestive tract, think about this tube, and the innermost layer, is, or in other words, what the food and stuff that we are swallowing is going to interact with, is going to be that epithelial layer. It's the cells that are tightly locked together, and indeed, those are called tight junctions. But then the epithelium itself is coated with the carbohydrate-rich glycocalyx. And that is going to be a primary site of interaction with everything we eat, but most especially in the case of this mini lecture, lectins. Lectins bind to the glycocalyx, which then allows them to disrupt gut integrity. A 1999 study published in the journal Gut found that phytohemagglutinin from kidney beans caused intestinal damage in animals, increasing gut permeability. This then means no surprise that lectins induced inflammation, disrupted the tight junctions, so making the cells more loosely adhered to one another, opening the gap, making it easier for bacteria to translocate from the gut into the bloodstream. So that's when they're slipping through between the cells, whereas what's coming from the gut is supposed to be going through the cell because then the cell can act as a gatekeeper in deciding what can come in. Well, when something can slip through or between the cells, rather, now there's no regulation. That's leaky gut. And the leaky gut, of course, can drive systemic inflammation, influencing things like insulin resistance and cardiometabolic disease. In humans, excessive lectin intake, particularly from raw or undercooked legumes, could really exacerbate gut issues, especially in people with things like irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, or various autoimmune conditions, particularly of the gut, like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. A 2017 case series in the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology reported symptom improvement in IBS patients following simply removal of one thing, namely lectins. Systemic inflammation from gut disruption elevates cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6, all of which can be easily measured in human plasma and is. In fact, another one would be C-reactive protein, which is measured nowadays in practically every blood test you're going to get. And the more you have inflammation up, these markers elevated in the plasma, the more you have the consequences like insulin resistance. And of course, properly preparing the food in order to try to mitigate the amount of lectins you're consuming is going to be essential, but again, you cannot remove all of them. Now, I mentioned insulin and insulin resistance a little, and in fact, lectins go a little more direct. They are particularly relevant because lectins can literally interact with insulin receptors. So these are the specific receptors, the doorways that are designed for insulin to come and knock on them to tell the cell to do something. Well, wouldn't you know it, wheat germ agglutinin, which I'll just abbreviate as WGA, found in whole wheat is a notable example. A 1980 study in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences demonstrated that WGA binds insulin receptors in fat cells. Now, of course, it would be happening at any insulin receptor, but at low concentrations, WGA mimics insulin, stimulating things like glucose transport and inhibiting lipolysis and promoting lipogenesis, so just overall promoting the growth of the fat cell. At higher concentrations, it actually starts to antagonize insulin, reducing the binding affinity and inhibiting glucose uptake, which can then contribute to problems like hyperglycemia. So the particular study, which was done in fat cells directly, showed that uh, WGA's insulin mimicking effects weren't as strong as insulin's, so it required a higher concentration to achieve the same results, but it nevertheless is evidence of this interaction, this cross-interaction of this seemingly inert molecule found in these, these carbohydrates that are not only think about think about the the whole thing here the whole story where you're eating like wheat for example whole wheat which is going to elicit a considerable increase in your glucose 
which in turn is going to elicit a considerable increase in insulin. So not only do you have the inherent normal insulin load, which as it persists can contribute to insulin resistance, but now you also are consuming these other little molecules that are mimicking insulin's effects. So you're amplifying an insulin response. And remember, the more you have the insulin receptors getting stimulated, the more they're going to become desensitized to the signal.